word of prayer before we go and look at our word tonight. But God, we thank you for the opportunity to, to look at your word, especially as we zoom now into Christmas. We pray that you would bless this time. We pray that you would help us to take this word, these words of scripture that we heard tonight, um, and take them into our hearts. Help us to apply them and let them out as well. We just pray this in your most blessed name. You know, my mom has a story of when she grew up, um, they found the perfect Christmas tree. And they decorated it, and, and once they got done, the family looked at it. They stood back and they looked at it, and they said, it's the perfect Christmas tree. And then my mom's dad said, you know, there's one thing that could make it look a little bit better. And so they took the, the ornaments down, and he said, let's spray, let's spray paint it silver. It's going to look beautiful. So they took the ornaments down, and, and, and they spray painted it silver, and it did look beautiful. And they all went to bed. And the next morning, they got up, and all the needles were off the tree. <laughs> so whether you have a tree tonight with needles on them, or a tree with no needles, Christmas is with us. You may not have all your packages wrapped. Who, who still needs to wrap packages when they go home tonight? I, I, I see some hands. There's time for that still. You may uh, not have gotten all your Christmas shopping done. I still have something that hasn't come and I don't think it's going to come now. Um, so they're getting a picture for Christmas of something. The cards might not be done, but, but you know what? You can write Happy New Year this week and they, they will still work. Um, the Christmas cookies might not be made, but you know what? Sheets is open and you can go. go there on the way home and you know what? If you get Reese's cups and you bite them the just the right way, you can make stars. <laughs> so, we can sit and, and wonder at why the season has come so fast. We thought we had a whole lot of time and, and, and here it is. Christmas is with us. Stack the halls because it is here. Follow the law and all that stuff. Christmas is with us. But what does that bring? Sure, tomorrow uh, we will be exchanging gifts with our families and friends and we'll probably be eating way too much food and we'll see people that we haven't seen in a while. But it is way too easy for Christmas to be just that. What does it mean for Christmas to be really with us? Have you thought about that? The, the passages of scripture that we, we look at tonight, and especially the, uh, the passage that, that uh, Frank read, finds Joseph in a pretty horrible situation, a pretty bad situation, a bad predicament. He has found out that Mary is with child. And the book of Deuteronomy, if you, if you study the Old Testament, you'll find that the book of Deuteronomy is a book on loss. And one of the things it says is a, a person like Mary who was with child who was not away should be taken to the city gates and stoned. Stoned to death. So she could have been killed. Joseph could have publicly divorced her. But he's a man of integrity, and he plans to privately divorce her. And then there's this dream. Joseph has a dream, and an angel appears and tells him that she will bear a son. Mary will bear a son, and they are to name him Jesus. And this fulfills what the prophet Isaiah wrote about. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel means God with us. And this is a fulfilling of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Which reads like this. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel. This gives Joseph a change of mind. And he takes Mary to be his wife. And then they travel for political and census reasons to a place called Bethlehem. 
where there is no room for them, and they have to lay their newborn in a manger, which is an animal feeding trough. And you know the story. We read it tonight. But do we really know the story? Do we know what it means? Is Christmas truly with us? Maybe we need to look at this word that we found in Matthew, this word Emmanuel, God with us. When you look at the word in the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 7, 14, we see that the word here is filled with an I instead of an E, which is kind of interesting. Why is that? Well, it is just a change in the language. If you look at the Old Testament, it, it was originally written in the language of Hebrew. And the New Testament is written in Greek. So it really is just a difference in languages, not a difference in meaning. But is there a different meaning? Something to think about. When looking at Emmanuel with an eye, how the ancient people in the Old Testament, before Jesus came, would have looked at Emmanuel, we can see that Emmanuel was called Messiah, or anointed one. Emmanuel is the one who saves. And there was a political viewpoint to, to the Messiah as Emmanuel would take down the, the authorities, they thought, they would, and become the reigning king. That he would be this big tough guy to take down the authorities. Maybe kind of like a Rambo kind of guy, if you know who Rambo is. Big tough guy. He would be the mighty God. Wonderful counselor. Emmanuel is also a mystery to these people in the Old Testament. Because you know what? He hasn't come yet. They don't know exactly who he's going to be. He's yet to come for these people in the Old Testament. <clears throat> now, when you look at Emmanuel in the New Testament within Jesus, you see a different thing. You see a son born to a virgin in a situation less than desired. Almost abandoned, we see, in, by Joseph. And looking at the Gospel of Luke, born humbly in a manger. <clears throat> Welcomed not by dignitaries from the government, but by shepherds who were keeping their watch, their, their watch um, by night. Shepherds were, were considered the lows of the low. And night shepherds, they were considered even lower. So Emmanuel may still be a mystery to these people, but he is a present among them. He is there. Not a mystery for the future, but a mystery for them in the present. Humble, not the Rambo kind of guy. Let's look at this mystery a little closer. You know, we know that Emmanuel means God is with us. He is the Messiah. God incarnate. God took the form of mankind. Yet why? <clears throat> Did God, God come because he just wanted to, to feel what it must feel like to be human? Or did God come because he loves humans so much that he wanted to be one? <clears throat> well, I, I, I believe to really find out why God had to come in the form of man, we need to look at another name in the passage. We saw the name Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. But we also need to look at the name of Jesus. The angel told Joseph to name the baby Jesus. But what does that mean? What does the name Jesus mean? Now, in today's world, when we name our children, we, we name it because, we name the child because maybe we like that name. Or maybe it flows good with their last name. Or maybe we name the child after someone that we have really respected or really liked. My mom was a preschool teacher, and she told us one time she could always tell the popular name on the soap operas because those were the names of the kids in her class. But names were important in ancient times, and you live up to your name. Your name kind of was 
your destiny. Destiny it was what you were going to do. You were named as to what you did. To understand this concept of Emmanuel, meaning God with us, and why God came in human form on that night so long ago, I believe we need to look at what Jesus means, what his name means. And it means God saves. Or God delivers. That is why God came in the form of man to deliver. He came to die on the cross for us in the worst way possible. The crucifixion was reserved for the worst criminals. You know, we should have been on our cross instead. Emmanuel, God with us, came to save us from the mess that we live in. Because we live in a mess. God came for mankind, for us. And when he died on the cross, he died for us. He saved us from our brokenness. For you see, we are a broken people. Right? We live in, in a world where, where children are mistreated, uh, a world where, where money is a god. We live in a world where there are shootings and, and violence against innocent people. We live in a world where the president of our nation has become impeached. And, and I don't care where you are on the political spectrum, you look at that and it's broken. People die when it seems that they should live. You know, a few Christmases back at the church I served, we had been praying for this little girl, about three years old. Um, she was really sick. And she died right before Christmas. And my first reaction was, God, why? Why so close to Christmas? But then it dawned on me. The peace. Dawn on me once again that these things that we talk about at this time of year cannot come from the situations that we find ourselves in. The stuff that is happening in our world can't come from that. It must come from the babe in the manger. For you see, Christmas is with us. So what, what does one do in all this brokenness? Well, I believe that God takes our pieces and can make something beautiful if we let Him. See, the Son came to, to redeem us, to take us to a different place. Jesus came to, to take our broken pieces and make them beautiful. Emmanuel, God with us, making something beautiful out of the dust that we are.
How do we let the world know that God is indeed with us? We are not alone. So let's go forward this Christmas Eve knowing the truth of Emmanuel. This beauty should be too much for us to contain. Merry Christmas. <laughs>